This is part two of a survey of Ayrshire's prehistoric and ancient stones, not including the medieval. Darvel's Dagon stone could be a genuine standing stone, however it's been moved around the town from various places due to road widening schemes and so on. The ball-shaped stone attached to the top seems to be done at the whim of a blacksmith in the early 19th century. There are said to be very celestial markings on it, but they're regarded as being simple wear and tear. This is a replica of a stone that still survives, but is now hidden in the underground mill race. The significance of the markings is not known, but it may relate to family relationships. The name of the stone may relate to the children's game. Also, it's another name for a curling stone. There are no legends attached to it that survive, but it's very prominent and has a lot of character. The Draffen stone was moved from a nearby field to its present position. It's not clear whether it's a genuine standing stone or whether it's simply a cattle rubbing stone. And when it was moved, no investigation took place as to any finds found at its location or the details of how it was secured in position. The Druid's graves below Cuff Hill is a rare Neolithic chamber tomb. It used to be covered with stones, but many of these were taken for road building. In a field beside the railway at Drybridge is one of the few undisputed standing or many here stones in the Asher. It stands in an area which has a number of prehistoric features of a religious nature, such as a cursus. A gauk is a Scottish name for a fool or for a cuckoo. Scotland used to have its own Gauk's Day, equivalent to April Fool's Day. This was held on April the 13th, when the first cuckoo was said to call. The first call of the cuckoo was said to come from a Gauk stain. This would bring on a spring storm, known as a Gauk storm. It was also thought that the call beckoned the souls of the dead, and that the bird was capable of moving between the, the lands of the living and the lands of the dead. It's not known how the granny stone came by its name. There were certainly several stones here at one time that may form part of a stone circle. The others were broken up and used to build the weir, such as the outcry that one of, one of them was kept. But the raised water level means that only the very tip shows. Moncton's hair stone is a glacial erratic that was moved here from a nearby field. There are several stories of witchcraft and evil spirits associated with it. The Haley chambered tomb in Larg states from around 3000 BC. It was once known as Margaret's Law. At that time it was covered with a, a mound of stones. It's also been associated with Viking burials from the Battle of Largs. The hillstone may simply be a cattle rubbing stone, but it's interesting that it lies close by to the hill farm where Professor Tom lived. He established what he believed to be a unit of measurement used by constructors of these ancient monuments, and he called that the megalithic yard. This is a replica of a Pictish artifact known as a carved stone ball. Their use isn't exactly known, but it's thought they were some form of symbol of power. Quite how this one ended up at Jock's Thorn in Comores, near the old castle, is not known. Possibly the spoils of war. <laughs>